Yes. Today we're going to talk on building a firm foundation. And the reason why I was speaking of this is because the more and more you hear about the gospel around the world, the more you hear about the gospel in this country, the more you find out that people put too much faith in people and not enough faith in God and not enough faith in the Word. We read like stories about different preachers saying heaven isn't real, that hell's not real, that everything's just a fairy tale, and all you should do is give me more money so I can keep on preaching this to you to make you feel good. We hear about different preachers you find out doing whatever they're big enough to do and don't ever believe a word that's in the Bible. Well, that's what you got to read for yourself because you have to read to show yourself a proof. The Bible actually says that. It actually says test me. It wants you to put the entire thing through the test. So when you hear a false preacher or false prophet telling you that, it's up to you to read that. That's right. So what we're going to do is our baseline scripture, scriptures are going to be Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Because people, when they think about foundations, they think about the how you watch one, because we're watching the building get put up. We watch the people slowly dig and move everything around, uproot all the trees, get rid of all the grass, dig deep to the core, put down a nice little rock down, put down some concrete, depending on how they're going to build it. Then they put the framework up to make it strong. And then they put everything around it. And then when everything hits it, it'll make it. Well, if God's like, yeah, that's what I want you to do in the Bible. It says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 23, 24 through 27, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes and the torrents and the floodwaters rut, rise, and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it was built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. And unfortunately, the body of Christ, too many people put their foundation and built it on sand. They build it on lies, pleasantries, and people promising you things that's not even in the Bible. They build it on a person. And God's like, I'm not a man that I don't lie. When he says that, he's saying, I'm not a woman or a man. I'm not a human like y'all. I don't lie. What I tell you I'm going to do, I'm going to do. People will lie whether you want them to or not. That's why God gives you forgiveness to come to him before the throne of grace so you can ask for forgiveness. Because they're not perfect. That's why he said, built it on me. He said, I am perfect. I am that solid bedrock. So whenever you have problems hitting you, like your employees or employers or family, friends, or strangers, hit against that, that wall. If bills hit. People lose their jobs. It hits. He said, since you built that foundation, you won't bend it. You won't crumble. You won't sink into the sand. You won't blow away. That's why God wants you to read, to show yourself approved. He wants you to have that firm foundation. So anytime someone starts coming at you as a Christian, you can basically just put your feet down no matter where you're at. You're like, I'm going to make it. And then whenever you feel like you had a little bit weak, basically have the angels hold you up. Then the Holy Spirit will jump into you and give you what you need. Give you that strength. Give you the words that will come back in remembrance. Everything that Jesus has said. And would it be like that one scripture, that one word, that one chapter, that one book that's just your book? God's like, I can deal with it. All I need is a little seed. He said, I can grow it. And that goes for anything bad or good. Just like when you did a farm foundation, if you build it properly, it'll grow into something great. It'll build into a castle. Because you'll watch all these different buildings around the world, and you'll start looking, how did they build that? They didn't build it overnight. They even built it in a year. Most of those buildings are still sitting today. It took several years, sometimes centuries, to build them up. And why is that? Because as you see, they're still around thousands of years later, because they built it properly. They built it brick by brick. So every single one of those problems you have, basically God said, I can make it. And you're like, yeah, you can. So you put another brick on there. He's like, well, now I can get up that door and you put another brick in there. Next thing you know, two, three, four, five years later, you got a castle. Uh -huh. Someone may come over and chip away at it, might hit this wall over there, but you can build it right back up because the foundation sound. Just like when you have a house and then you have a roof that messes up on it, what can you do? You can replace that roof because the foundation sound. You have something to work with. Uh -huh. All God asks for you to have is to have a little word and I'll have something to work with. And now that I have that firm foundation, You'll hear all these false prophets. You'll hear all these false teachers and realize that doesn't sit right. That's not of God. You know why you know that? Because you built that firm foundation. Praise so we'll jump over to Luke chapter 6, verses 47 to 49. And when you get there, just say amen. Because amen. my God is better than your God Praise if you don't Lord. believe the God of the Bible. If you hear anybody ever tell you that hell is not real, that hell's a fake fairy tale, stop following that person right then and there. That's nothing but a demon basically trying to get you to fall down the path. 
You don't want to be like those people that go and go to an island or go to a place and they give you all the good uh, grape juice or wine, and then like an idiot, you drink it and all of you die. What's going to happen when you open your eyes and there's a demon sitting there waiting? Thank you for being stupid. Like, go take your seat over there. And then you'll be basically oppressed and you'll find out the hard way. Hell, Israel, and all the idiots who follow that person will find out along with them. Mm -hmm. Don't be that person. Be a smart person. Don't be a foolish person. Be a person that showed themselves approved. Show, be that person that built that firm foundation. Don't be the person that put it on sand so when that person crumbles, you fall with them. Mm -hmm. When that person falls and you get out, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. My Bible said don't follow him. You'll be just fine. So we go to Luke chapter 6, verses 47 to 49. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against the house and could not shake it because it had been built well. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke it, immediately it fell and the ruin of the house was great. Why did I give you that scripture? That's two different scriptures, or two different books, talking about the same thing. Right. And remember he said that the voice of two or three, every word is confirmed. Right. It's all throughout the Bible about firm foundations. He's trying to let you know one simple thing. When you have the word in you, you'll always have the foundation to come back to. You'll always have something to hold you up. Because when you, you can always tell which Christians believe in what they're supposed to believe in. Because when something bad hits them, the ones who don't believe in the Bible at all, they just run away and say, that, that guy ain't good for me. And they run away and never come back again. But then you have those Christians. You'll hear about them, they had this disease hit them. This calamity hit them. This person died. This job was lost. This family member is gone. This was taken away from them. You know what they say? But God, that's someone who had a firm foundation. Because they built it up right. They, people need to go back to what the old Christians did, where they start quoting off the Bible more and more often. And basically let it keep on coming through them. Just like I can quote off stats and tell you everything happened in a sports game or a video game, you should be able to do the same thing with the Bible. And nowadays, you don't even have to memorize it. You have your phone, you have your tablets, you have your computers. Just look it up. You'll find it. All you have to do is search. Because seek, and what will happen? You'll find. Knock. And door always will be open. Because God's like, I am that firm foundation. I will always be there for you. And people are like, well, I hate the church. <laughs> That's funny you say you're in church. Because God didn't say, I told you to believe in the church. He said, believe in me. Mm -hmm. If you think all the churches around you are bad, okay. He said, that's good. Now go pick up a phone, pick up a computer, and start reading the Bible yourself. Mm -hmm. And start believing Jesus for yourself. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you're doing so good of a job that you, you think you've mastered it, why don't you start your own church? Why don't you actually believe God the way he wants you to believe and find one or two people to believe in it as well to build up your faith? Because there's too many things in life now for you to sit there and say, I don't like to go to that church. Okay, that's cool. There's seven and a half billion people on this planet. There's the internet. Read it yourself and build up your foundation. Right. All right, we'll go with Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. It says, Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am the one who is laid as a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious stone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. When you believe in God, you don't have to hurt. Praise the Lord. When you believe in God, you can sit there and, like this one show I watch, be still. I love when you watch these different people trying to push the Eastern faith or trying to push the universe. And you're like, huh, all of that sounds familiar. It sounds like it's from the Bible. And it sounds like someone's trying to make you think it's not from the Bible. The Bible says everything you hear that's good comes from the Word. The Bible has been written, been spoken, been passed down for generations upon generations. And it doesn't change. Amen. Yeah. Everything good it says happen, happens. Everything bad it says happen, happens. Uh -huh. All it says is believe in God, in His Son, Jesus Christ. And everything will be taken care of. Like He said, He's a stone, a tested stone. A precious cornerstone. Uh -huh. Of a sure foundation. What He's trying to tell you? Testament. Try to knock it over. Try to burn it up, no matter what. It keeps coming back because it's tested. It's sure. Most religions can't say that. We put most of them to the test of time, they got to change it a little bit. They got to go back and correct it a little bit. They got to start talking about something called the universe. What is the universe? A bunch of burning stars burning in the vacuum of space? How does that happen? How don't we just fall apart and basically all this 
push together and blow up again. Where's the Jason? That's gravity. Really? That's the scientist's favorite thing to say when they can't explain anything. Gravity. You know what he's saying? Because you can't see it. You can't touch it. But you can, you can almost see the after effects of it. Like, dude, so we're sitting on a ball of rock going around a burning globe. <laughs> Separated by the vacuum of space, but we have an atmosphere that keeps us from not being able to breathe. And we have gravity that pushes away so we don't fall into it. But we want to blame the universe? I think that's a God. I think that's a firm foundation that keeps everything in order. Right. I think it's something that basically tells life, you will continue when I tell you to continue, you will end when I tell you to end. That's a person who knows the beginning, the middle, and the end. All we ask for you to do is just believe. Don't worry about that stuff. Because I got you. So we'll jump over, go to chapter, Matthew chapter 16, verses 18. And it says, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell should not be what? Prevail against it. He said, if you build your foundation on me, and you make Jesus Christ your rock, nothing hell can do will prevail against you. Nothing. Yes, it may look like it works for a few months. It may look like it works for a few years. But he said, I will make sure you are the victorious person if you just believe in me. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 13, or 13 through 16, Each one's works will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will re receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. Though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If you build your foundation on him, God will always be with you. No matter the burning, the loss, the dying, whatever around you that seems like is just evil, just hitting you every single way. He's like, if you just make me your foundation, you will dwell in God's temple, and the Spirit of God will always be within you. Not around you, not without you, but within you. Always giving you that strength you need. Like, a person said they like working and can't go on, they need that job. And all of a sudden, they get that burst of energy. And they're like, where'd that come from? God's like, I'm going to keep on pushing you to make sure you make it. Because I always reference that one picture mom used to have where the person's asking God, when did you help me? Because he said, you see those, those sand footsteps on the sand where there's four people or four footsteps? I go, yeah, that's where I was walking next to you. So what about when there was two? That's when you fell down I picked you up. Well, and I did so good of a job doing it. You didn't know it was me. You thought it was you. Because why? Because God wants you to build your faith up. He doesn't want to remind you every day, I did that for you. Like someone gives you some money to make it, they're like, I did that for you. No, God's like, uh, what I'll do is I'll jump into you and give you strength so you think you're doing it yourself and not realizing I got you through that depression. I got you through that sickness. I got you through that time when you were between jobs. I got you through that time whenever you thought you couldn't make it or you couldn't find that spouse or you couldn't find that person you wanted. I got you through that. All you have to do is believe. Now we'll jump over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. It says, For one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He's letting you know that if you just... Do what I say. Jesus already laid it for you. All he had to do is follow it. He's not asking you to, how they put it, what's the terminology? To rebuild the will. He's not asking you to break the will. He's like, I am the will. I'm the wood that goes into the will. He's like, or, he's, I'm the, the metal you put into the will. That's all me. I laid it all, I put, gave you all the tools you need to build it. I gave you all the tools you need to walk it. All you have to do is believe it. So we'll jump over to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. And it says, For I know that the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. See, it's not just that he gives you foundation and something to believe in. He's letting you know, when you believe, you will have a future. You will have a hope. No matter who's in power, wherever it is around the world, if you believe in God and His Son, Jesus Christ, there is a future. There is a hope for you. All you have to do is believe. And when you believe, you have to act. You can't just be one of those people that said this and say that, but don't follow everything you're saying. Just sit there and just quote the scriptures. When God says, seek and, find, seek and you shall find, and knock, you should, the door shall be open. He's saying you get out there. Seek the truth. Look out there. Look for the job. Look for the spouse. Look for the work. Look for whatever it is you're looking for. Don't just sit there. Actions. That's what you need. Because first, for faith for works is what? Yeah. That's what people do not get. The Bible does not say sit on your butt. And complain about everything. It's like get up off your butt and make it happen. That's right. 
Because when you're making it happen when there's nothing there, that's how you use your faith. All right, we'll jump over to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. So but God's firm foundation stands, bearing this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. When you set your foundation on God, God will mark you. He will make sure everyone knows you are part of his kingdom. Uh -huh. He will make sure everyone knows that no matter what happens, iniquity will be removed from you. Whatever problems you have, you will stand apart from it. It's like whenever you go to a workplace and you think everyone doesn't know you're a Christian or whatever else it is. And like a dad, Chris, and almost everybody that preaches says the same thing. You find out quickly how people are watching you when you mess up. Whoa, whoa, that's not in your character. You're like, put yourself up. Have you been paying attention to me? You've been marked. Everyone knows who you are. Whether they say it or not, they know who you are. Because remember, spread your seed everywhere. You never know what will come back. All you've got to do is do what God tells you to do. And that one little simple act of kindness or that one simple demonstration of you standing firm in your beliefs, someone's watching you. It may not be a minute, a year, 20 years, 50. That person is locked onto that. And it's like, I'm going to believe in God now. Jesus Christ is my Savior. Now come to the Father. So we'll jump over to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Everyone knows this. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you have that firm foundation and that belief in Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior, you have the strength to do anything, anything. because God strengthens you. Because remember, when you fall down, because people, I don't care how you look at it, you're going to fall down. But when you have a foundation, you get right on back up again. And if that person will give you a hand, the angels, the Holy Spirit's like, get on back up. You're good. Come on. Just dust yourself off and try it again. You may fall down, look like you're knocked off the count. It may take you months, some people years, but guess what? You still can get right back up again. All you've got to do is ask for forgiveness. Know you made a mistake and just go out, find the word you need and arm yourself and go back and do it again. All right. We'll jump over to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God made you. He made you perfect. He told you you could do anything if you just believe. All you got to do is walk in it. That's why people have a hard time believing in Christianity. One person said, Jason, it's too simple. It can't be that simple. Oh, no, no, no. It isn't that simple. It's simple accepting God. The hard part's now staying in it. Because everything in life is trying to break you from the faith. Everything in life is saying you shouldn't believe this way. Everything in life is trying to tell you to take the easy way. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard, but it will be worth it. Because why is it worth it? Because at the end, you will have your reward. Not just in heaven, but here on earth. If you just believe, all your needs will be met. All of the things you want will be healing, will be finances, wherever it is, will be met if you just believe. If you act on that belief, then you will keep on going. And we'll jump over to Psalms 40, verse 2. It says, He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. No matter what situation you come, come from, no matter what situation you're going through, if you just believe in that firm foundation, He'll pick you up and put you on solid ground. He'll steady you. He'll make sure that anything you need, you'll have it. He'll make sure whatever dark past you have, whatever secret you're hiding, if you just come with, a, with an open heart, a heart that believes in Him, God will make sure you have a firm foundation and will continue to grow in the years to come. And I hope something I've said has helped someone build a firm foundation today. With that close, and say it's all good. Amen.